All right, welcome to part two of section 7.1, graphing exponential growth functions. What we're going to be looking at is an exponential growth model in this first part here. So the next two examples are really just real life situations. We're going to look at compound interest, and we're looking at this exponential growth model right here. Now, uh, this is for real life quantities increased by a fixed amount over a certain time period. T is going to be time, okay? And then A is actually our initial amount. That's how much you start with, whether it's a profit, okay, if it, usually it's money. So A is our initial amount, T is time, and T can be years, it can be days, it can be months. Uh, so that can change. The, the important thing here is we have this 1 plus R, and this is our growth model. And when I talked about the introduction of exponential graphs, um, we talked about how b has to be greater than 1. So you have this 1 plus r, that's our growth factor. And if you think about it, when we have exponential growth, you should be over 1. And when you have this 1 plus r, r is going to be your rate. Okay, and that's usually, that's going to be as a decimal. So it might be a percent increase, but your 1 plus r is your growth factor. So let's say you sell a house or you buy a house for $80,000, and then when you sell that house, you sell it for $80,000, but you actually make 12% profit in addition to the $80,000. So basically, you're making 100% back on your house plus an additional amount, and that's why our growth factor has got to be over 1, okay? And that makes it exponential. Remember, our B value here always has to be greater than 1, okay? So now we're really kind of saying our B value is equal to 1 plus R. Okay, and so we're going to look at a real life situation here where uh, we have exponential growth. So I'm going to just use the revealer here. Okay, and this problem is just saying that we've got, in 1996, we have 2,573 computer viruses. And over the next seven years, the amount of computer viruses, incidences that are reported, is going to increase 92%. So what we're going to be asked to do is, number one, we're going to be asked to write an equation that represents this uh, model. Number two, uh, we're, going to, we're going to graph the model. And number three, we're going to use the graph to estimate uh, the year when there was 125,000 com computer security incidences. Okay? So let me just cover that up. So we're going to start with our exponential model. In this case we're going to use n for the number of incidences. Now our initial amount was 20, uh, 2,500 computers, 2,573 computers. That's what we started with. And the interest, or the interest rate, excuse me, the rate of incidence increases was going to be 92 percent over seven years. Okay, so it's not 92 percent. We're just going to convert that to a decimal. And so by substitution we see that we're going to get this equation um, two. 2,573 times the quantity 1.92 raised to the t power. So here is our growth model that represents this data. It's a growth model because your b value is greater than 1. That would represent growth. In the next section we're going to look at decay when this b value is between 0 and 1. Okay, so growth you have to have a b value greater than uh, 1. So number two, uh, we can actually figure out in seven years how many incidences there are going to be because we're looking at 2003, so it's seven years past 1996. So again, by substitution for your T value, okay, and raising uh, 1.92 to the seventh power and multiplying that by 2,573, you get 247,485 incidences, okay? Step two, they asked us to graph this. Well, now, remember, we showed you a quick way to graph this. You can use 0, A as one of your points, because anytime you raise anything to the 0 power, it's just A. So there's 0, A, and then 1, A times B. So 1.92 times 2,573 gives us that 4,900. So we can plot additional points along with that, but you can see from the graph here on the left, if we do 0 in 2,573, we could barely see that if you look at the graph because it looks like it's going by 25,000s. You're not going to see that. Then 1, you get about 
4,000, uh, 4,940, uh, which is here. And then you can plot some other points. How you would do that is you'd plug in values. You can see at when t is 7, we had over um, about 250,000 here. So if you look here, here's 7. So they've plotted that. Okay. And you can draw a nice smooth curve here to match that data. Now they want us to predict the incidences of 125,000. Okay, so when is this going to be 125? So you can note here in red, the y-axis is increasing by 25,000 each tick mark. So here's 75,000, 100,000, 125, and you're really just going to take a ruler and you draw a straight line to where your graph, you touch your graph, and then you draw a straight line down. And so six years, it seems, after six years, we would have 125,000 incidences. Okay, now that's just an estimate. That's why they have the approximately here, because you're basing it on a graph. But it seems like it's a logical answer. You, you, you wouldn't have a T value over 7, because then you would have over 250,000 incidences. So 6 seems like it could be reasonable. Okay, so the second type of example we're going to look at is this really important formula called compound interest. Okay, um, again, P is your initial amount. It's the amount you deposit, okay, your starting amount. Anytime you open a bank account and you get, you got to put something in, that's your initial amount. Now this changes. R, again, is your rate. This is your interest rate. Okay, and that's going to be written as a decimal. And N is the... Your, how many times you're compounding per year okay and that can be a lot of different things and you're gonna see that you can talk about yearly okay quarterly is you know a lot quarter you get quarterly statements but you could get quarterly okay you could do daily you could do um, every six months semi-annually so that can and can be a lot of different things and again T is still going to be time so we're just going to look at one more real-life example of this type of problem so let's say you're going to deposit four thousand dollars in an account you get two point nine two percent annual interest okay find the balance after one year if the interest is compounded with a given frequency. So in part A, we're going quarterly. Now, anytime you think of quarterly, I think, ooh, four, right? Okay, so this happens every three months, quarterly. So every three months, your interest is being compounded. So um, it's every three months, but quarterly means four times a year. And break the year up into four equal segments of three months. So when we're looking for the year balance, the balance after one year, we've got to set up our equation. So that A value is going to be equal to 4,000 times the quantity 1 plus, well, our interest rate is 2.92. So that's actually 0 0.0292 all over your N value. This is compounded quarterly, so it's got to be over 4. And that would be raised to the 4 times 1 power. Calculating this, we can simplify just a little bit more. Okay, we'll start in parentheses. So you have 1.0073 to the 4th power. Okay, you simplify that out. Here's your B value. It's barely over 1, but it's over 1. So we know this is exponential growth. So it's four thousand one hundred and eighteen dollars and about nine cents. Okay, B. If you were going to do this whole thing over again, all you change now is you would change your four to three sixty-five, and that's it. Everything else is the same. You're still using the same amount of money deposited. Okay. But instead of doing this quarterly, your interest is actually compounded daily. And you might think, wow, you're compounded daily instead of quarterly. You should make a lot more money. This should be 365, sorry. But it actually ends up being 
not that much more. 1.00008 after we simplify to the 365 power. Basically, you're taking a number that's really equivalent to 1 and raising it to the 365th, uh, 365th power. You're actually at $4,118.52. So, not much difference there. Okay, so uh, these are the last two examples I want to show you. They're just real life examples of exponential growth. One is a growth model, and this one, uh, the second step we showed you is actually for compound interest. Now, there's other ways we can do this. You'll learn in later sections involving um, the